An 18 pound walleye was just cut. Fort Peck is showing out. And egg cannons are a real thing. We got that and more coming up right now in Target Walleye's top five presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. An almost 18 pound walleye was recently caught on Fort Peck in Montana by a local guide named Jason Mundell. Check this freaking nature out. He caught it last Sunday and said that it originally weighed over 18 pounds but it was spewing out eggs as they were weighing it. And by the time his buddy took a picture of the scale, it had dipped down to 17.76 pounds, which is so close to what would have been a new state record walleye in Montana. We were so close. After snapping those couple of photos, they released it to get even more bigger. But it doesn't really have to get that much bigger considering the current state record is 18.02 pounds. Who knows how big that bad boy will be next year. Bad girl. Who knows how big that bad girl will be next year. So the current state record at 18.02 was caught by Trevor Johnson of Kitts Tackle. It was caught in May of 2021, just a few years back, fishing near Helena, Montana on Holter Reservoir. Trevor caught that thing jigging with a quarter ounce Kitts Tackle Glass Minnow in the Lunch Lady color. They actually hand tie them themselves and he had it paired with a Kitek Swing Impact Paddle Tail on the back. Also, I gotta say I love the name of that color, Lunch Lady, because it reminds me of that Billy Madison scene that is exactly how I like my walleyes. Extra big and sloppy. I know how you skits like them sloppy. <laughs> Lady, you're scaring us. Speaking of Fort Peck, there was some absolutely ridiculous bags recently brought in at the annual Tough Guy tournament there out of Hell Creek Marina. Yup, you're seeing those weights right. Five fish for 60.35 pounds, which is a 12.07 pound average for walleyes. And yet for some reason there is no pictures of those winning fish, let alone any details on how they caught them. But at least they were nice enough to give us a picture of the guys holding the plaques this time around. It's always so hard to scrape up any details on anything that's going on in what I call the Wild West, although they have probably some of the absolute biggest walleyes in the world. And we're always wondering anything about them. Anything. How deep did you catch them? Color, speed, depth. What technique were you using? Something. Give me just something. I'm just flabbergasted by this. Why is there never any info on potentially one of the biggest or the biggest walleye bags ever weighed in? And all we have is a picture of a piece of paper from weigh in? Come on. The Wild West, you can't even make it digital. Somebody has to take a picture of a printout. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to calm down, but you can't go and post a picture of a piece of paper with five walleyes for over a 12 pound average and then just go silent on us, ghost us, leave us at that. I did as much digging as I possibly could and there's a couple of things I do know but of course even more that I don't. This tournament is actually a length to weight conversion. They don't actually weigh the fish, everybody measures the fish and then there's a chart that converts that length into pounds. So it's even because everybody's using the same chart. But also keep in mind that doesn't mean that this isn't a crazy impressive bag. No, they weren't 12.0 whatever pounds a piece, but I found a copy of that conversion chart, did the math, and the first place team had a 31 inch average on five fish. Their smallest fish was a 30 and a quarter incher, their biggest fish of the five was a 32 and a quarter incher, and that wasn't even the biggest or that wasn't even the longest fish of this derby. Somebody caught a 33 incher in this thing. Of course, there's no pictures of it. But I was able to track down a Facebook post that did have a fish picture from a Wild West Montana Derby. And these are the second place finishers in this tournament. This is actually Wayne Wilcox and Gage Gordon who weighed five for 58.11 pounds. 
and doing a reverse conversion of that weight with that chart was a 30.65 inch average on five fish. Unbelievable bag, fellas. I can't believe that's a second place bag in a tournament. Over a 30 inch average. This is all just bonkers. I, I'm, I'm convinced that they purposely don't post any pictures or videos or any info from the Wild West because they don't want the whole rest of the walleye world to invade their territory. But I don't care, man. I'm planning a road trip. I gotta go figure this out for myself. What is going on? If you're looking for a challenging puzzle, try putting this bad boy together. And believe it or not, but believe it, those are actually walleye bones. And now here's what it looks like after down to the bone taxidermy puts those pieces of the puzzle together. That's some incredible work. It sounds like a walleye skull like that and a case combined costs around 200 bones. <laughs> which is pretty dang cool. I got to snooping through his Facebook page actually and I found another post where he had put together a complete full reconstruction of a walleye skeleton. It was a 28 incher. Thing is pretty cool. I guess you can actually have your walleye cake and eat it too. If you've been hanging around here long enough, you've probably heard us call those big fat pre-spawn walleyes egg cannons before. In this pic from the Iowa DNR of them stripping walleye eggs from an 11 to 12 pound bruiser is really all you need to know as to why we call them egg cannons. Boom, baby. If you're wondering what the heck that guy is doing, there's not a whole lot of natural walleye reproduction in Iowa, so they rely heavily on stocking fish into lakes, rivers, streams to keep that walleye population flourishing. This spring they collected nearly 1,900 quarts of eggs they're currently incubating and in just a few months it'll turn into millions of walleyes that they'll be putting back into the systems for us to catch. So I just wanted to say a big props to the Iowa DNR Fisheries crew for taking such good care of those egg cannons and all that ammo that goes with them. I've seen some wild deformities before, but man, this one is right up there. It was recently shared on Pete Mana's Facebook page, and he said Kyle Sorensen had this one come and whack his bait with one of its two mouths. <laughs> and it actually happened on Friday the 13th, nonetheless, if it couldn't have gotten any weirder. <laughs> Most folks in the comments section are suspecting that it was caused from some sort of an injury, maybe from like a boga grip style tool, or somebody putting that fish on a stringer before it getting away or letting it go. And the only other ideas anybody really has is that it's maybe caused from where the fish was caught. I'm assuming Springfield. That wraps up this week's top five. A big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and making this fun video series possible. If you want more walleye related content like this, sign up for our free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com. I'll see you back in seven.